Hey everyone, it's Wilmer from the Game Academy. In this episode, I wanted to show a super cool feature that Unity released for 2019.3 and above. It's useful for those of you building games on mobile. And that's this feature called the Device Simulator. With it, you can select any number of common phone or tablet devices and preview your Unity application without needing to create a build. To get it, you must be in Unity 2019.3 or above. It does not work in earlier versions because this feature required substantial changes to the editor. But if you can use 2019.3 or later, go to the package manager. As of this recording, the device simulator is still in preview. You'll need to make sure that we turn on the advanced filter for show preview packages. Browse all the packages for the device simulator. It's a fast install. After that imports, we should get a new menu item, Window General Device Simulator. That opens up a new window. Go ahead and dock that in the layout or keep it floating if you prefer. That opens up some settings for the most common mobile devices as well as a preview window. You can swap between this traditional game view and the device simulator using the drop down at the top left and try out different screen sizes that are available in the drop down next to it. Those screen settings will give you access to certain properties from the screen class. Basically, a lot of information that you would grab out of the Unity Engine screen are now shown here in the UI. We have fields for screen resolution, some options for orientation, portrait or landscape, or auto rotation between the two. And there's a small set of player settings that can override what we might normally have in the project settings player window. If you switch this to game view instead of simulator, it should behave exactly as you would normally expect the editor to display when you click play. Let me choose a logical aspect ratio since the game was designed to run in portrait. And here is our example Tetris clone project. You can play the game with the keyboard as we designed it. When you switch to the device simulator, the touch specific code becomes active. I have this touch controller designed to switch user input if we're on the correct platform. In this case, I'll choose iPhone 8. And now when I play the game, my mouse cursor essentially acts like a finger on the simulated screen. I can swipe or tap my mouse finger and I'm playing the game on a simulated device. This saves me the trouble of building an Xcode project or an Android APK and having to connect the physical device and transfer the binary. In this way, you can iterate much more quickly rather than having to go through the actual build each time. Eventually, of course, nothing is better than really testing on the device, but it's just to get a sense on how the application responds to real user input before that. You can run the device simulator much faster than creating a real build. In my case, now it looks fine on a Pixel 2 or an iPhone 7 even, but not so much on a new device like an iPhone 10s or Pixel XL. A lot of my UI elements don't look good anymore. Now with those devices that have a notch on the side like the iPhone 10 or 11, you can use this highlight safe area button to make it more clear where ideally you want to keep the UI elements within. You can either adjust your UI placement or you might need to customize some scripts based on the screen size. But the device simulator will save you that trouble of discovering those errors before you get to the point of building your iOS or Android binary. And of course, it also saves you the trouble of buying 10 different devices just to test with. In Unity's implementation, they've set up all these devices just as JSON files. In the packages, if you pop open the device simulator folder, you'll see a subfolder entitled device definitions. Inside there are just a number of text files. You can open these up and get more information about each device. Unfortunately, you can't create your own JSON definition here, but Unity says a mechanism for adding to their list of devices is in the works. And there you go, a device simulator to preview your mobile builds. Overall, a handy little addition that most of us wish were added, oh, say five to seven years ago. But overall, an awesome little feature that will save you a lot of time if your target platform is mobile. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Click the bell to get future notifications. If you want to support the channel or just learn more about mobile game development, definitely check out the original course at gameacademy.school. We go through a complete Unity project from start to finish, including porting a Tetris clone game to your favorite iOS or Android device. 
It's a great little portfolio piece and an awesome way to learn Unity game development. Okay, thanks for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you in the game again. Thank you.